Prince of Wales arriving there at the cathedral's south gate. This is a part of the cathedral city which is always popular with tourists across the river. The primary school where Her Majesty the Queen came on that cold March Sunday to lay flowers in her own tribute. The Prince of Wales uh, greeted first by the Vice Lord Lieutenant for Stirlingshire, Captain Derek Forbes, by Mrs Forbes, and amongst the others being presented representatives of the judiciary, Stirling Council and the police. As the congregation waits inside with their thoughts, one person who can perhaps try to put some of these into words is one of the town's doctors. Anne Pollock was there at the scene of the attack and she's been very much involved since. It was the most enormous grief that everyone felt, even although it, they weren't personally involved. And there was this huge feeling of, of pain, I think, that just was like waves going through the whole community. Um, now the Prince of Wales has been escorted down the nave by the minister of Dunblane Cathedral and the service is set to begin. As we were hearing earlier from Colin McIntosh, the service is intended to fall quite simply into distinct parts. In the first part, after a hymn and prayers, there'll be an act of remembrance. This is really the heart of the service, during which 17 candles inscribed by hand in gold lettering with the name of each child and their teacher will be lit by their families. This final piece of music we're hearing now before the service begins is Lullaby for Dunblane's Children. It's by Aref Mirzoyev, who's from Azerbaijan. It's one of many, many compositions from all over the world inspired by the events of that day in March. The Prince of Wales has joined the congregation in a building that's historically and quite correctly described as a cathedral. The great nave was commissioned by Bishop Clement of Dunblane in the 13th century, but after the Reformation, this became a center of parish worship for the National Church, the Church of Scotland. Today, it's a family church with more than a thousand members and a vigorous role in the community. Something you feel instantly here is its capacity for inspiring both awe and intimacy, both powerfully in evidence in those dark March days when its spacious beauty became so fitting a context for private grief. Now once again the cathedral is drawing Dunblane together, and the rest of us too, both to remember and to try to look ahead. Here are the people who will be leading the service. The minister, Colin McIntosh, with today's preacher, the very reverend Professor James White, and the associate minister, Moira Herkes. The other churchmen are the reverend George Kringles of St. Blaine's Church, the reverend William Gilmore of Lee Croft Church, and canon Basil O'Sullivan of the Roman Catholic Church of the Holy Family in Dunblane, who all know only too well the individual griefs of the families. It was they who conducted the funerals. Professor White, a former moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland, was invited to preach the sermon because of his immense compassion and understanding of grief. He spoke at the memorial service that followed another terrible tragedy, the Lockerbie air crash, which he conducted shortly after losing his own wife to cancer. He's visited many of the bereaved families in recent weeks.
May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. My friends, we gather here today with many others in our community and beyond to remember and to celebrate the lives of our children and their teacher, to treasure what they have meant and always will mean to us, the light that shone from their lives and shines on still. But we also come here to mark a stage in a journey we must all seek to make together towards that peace which we believe one day shall be ours again and a joy that shall return. And that is our journey out of darkness into light. I welcome you all and invite you to find hope in this service and to take that step forward with us in faith, trusting that God shall give us peace. Let us worship God. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Therefore, we declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. Let us pray. <laughs> 